to waste too much time here and go too long. But again, there's a lot going on right now. Brandon Robinson on Facebook and on. About the struggles people are having there. Cynthia, good morning. Good morning. Well, Jen and I spent the day yesterday meeting some remarkable people who have lost more than most of us. In an environment as quickly as possible where we can make sure they're safe physically. ...of yet another mixed up school year. The readiness bus. Originally, Rosie was designed to be a mobile preschool for rural kids who didn't have... Blood. We were living normal life. Yeah, we were going through COVID, but we had an amazing summer made amazing friends, and we went to the beach, vacation, and then on July 28th at 2 o'clock a.m., tragedy struck. I just ran with my dog to my neighbor's house for my life. Hi, my name is Kristen Duff, and I am an actress, model, screenwriter, writer, producer, co-producer, and assistant director. And I am a survivor of the Kentucky 22 flood that changed history, especially for Kentucky forever. And I have documented so many videos, so many photos, and so many just things and just everything that happened during this tragic and sad flood. And I have made a very special documentary just for you that will be coming out very, very, very soon and very close. And it's just been very tragic and very sad. And yes, it's been our fourth week since the flood has struck our amazing state and especially our amazing region of Eastern Kentucky. I love you all and thank you so much for the prayers and help and support. need and still need help, there are still phone numbers for flood relief phone numbers and flood relief websites to donate for help and support. Thank you so much for everyone that has helped and support, especially for Eastern Kentucky during this flood and tragic flood. Here are the top numbers for flood relief and relief numbers for disasters and more natural disasters and mostly including floods. For those who still need help, are still in danger, or are still missing in the area, here are the following numbers. Catastrophic situation unfolding in Kentucky. At least 30 people are dead, hundreds. Survivors is difficult. Bridges and roads are washed away. Vital power is out and the threat of more rain is still hanging over this very saturated region. A new flood watch was issued overnight for the eastern part of the state. And we're learning more today about those who escaped the waters and more about those. UYMT Mountain News. This is Issues and Answers, the Mountain Edition. Coming up out of the trees, 80 feet below. Devastating, and I do believe it will end up being one of the most significant, uh, deadly floods that we have had in Kentucky in at least a very long time. The resources needed, and also tell the people of eastern Kentucky that we are going to be there for them. We want to help. Now, the toughest update this morning is we have our first set of confirmed deaths. There's a report that uh, we have lost a... It's just devastation. Total devastation. Christian Supermarket. We can tell about where the water came up because look at this shelf. Looks like nothing ever happened and everything else, mud. What you have to understand is our customers are our family. The people who works in this store is our family. We know each other. We know each other's pains. Neighbor Natasha York lost everything. After this horrific. Hello, everyone. This is your actress, model, screenwriter, writer, 
producer, co-producer, and assistant director. And today I will be telling you and showing you the disaster that happened in Eastern Kentucky that changed U.S. history forever in Eastern Kentucky forever, which people call every a thousand year flood that happened in where I am raised, born in Eastern Kentucky in which I am from. Thank you so much for all the prayers and all the support, especially from out of town and out of state and especially people in the town that have done it as well. And this all goes to, especially to the people that has helped us during this flood. And it's been very hard and very, very tragic. And especially for people that have been going through a really hard time due to this flood and the loss of nearly 40 people or nearly 40 people. Yeah. And thank you so much, everyone. It's been a blessing to have the help we have had. And it's a very sad situation that we are all going through. And if you are going through a situation like this, you are not alone. And we will help you as much as possible. Thank you so much. And please enjoy. And thank you so much. <laughs> Waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning was one of the worst experiences of my life on July 28th. Waking up and seeing that your whole yard turned into a full-blown muddy ocean. I was just 17 years old, and I am a 17-year-old today, but one of the most drastic, I'm definitely going to say it was the biggest natural disaster I've ever been through in my life. This natural disaster affected hundreds, if not thousands, of lives across the Eastern Kentucky area. This was one of the most tragic, most drastic floods we have ever been through, of some say within a thousand year reach. Of houses were flooded we were everywhere. All in normal lives. And at like two o'clock in the morning, that's when um traumatic stuff struck this is four weeks after the disastrous flood occurred I remember when my mom, she woke me up at two o'clock in the morning. She said, Kristen, we have an emergency. And she woke me up and I thought the house was on fire. I really did. I legitly thought the house was on fire. But um, when I looked out the front door. I have done tons and tons and a lot of research to help support my documentary and all the research and effects that happened during the flood. So now we will be talking about how much rain occurred during this time and on July 28th. One of my coping skills of dealing with this flood and especially the trauma of it was making this documentary by me, a 17-year-old girl, and a 17-year-old girl's point of view of this flood and how it... I know a lot of people who have lost their homes or now have their, mud, have their homes covered in mud. Um, and there's just a lot of people trying to clean their homes up and it's just a really sad situation. And even though we are um, four weeks into the flood, we still need as much help as we can. And that's the most saddest part is it has affected 
not just one town, but all of eastern Kentucky was just flooded and especially Breathitt County was destroyed and they also there was rumors that they may had to evacuate. Now in this documentary I will be telling you my story on how I survived one of the worst floods that have ever happened in the United States history that happened on July 28th 2022 around 2:36 a.m. It broke my heart after this flood happened, especially seeing the most heartbreaking thing was the death toll and everybody's belongings everywhere. That broke my heart. I cried for, I am going to say, a week straight. It was just the most craziest thing. Like, it was like a dream, but not even a dream. It was actually a nightmare. And it just, it broke my heart. A couple decades before this flood happened, Kentucky, especially Eastern Kentucky, was hit by another flood. Not as bad as the 2022 flood, but a flood that lost people's homes, lost um, possessions, lost everything they owned. The question is, did the 1948 Eastern Kentucky and Kentucky flood have anything to do with the flood that happened on July 28th of 2022? There has been rumors that this flood could have been effective. The question is, are these rumors true? Are these rumors about the 1948 flood to the 2022 flood are true? There are so many rumors, tons and tons and tons of rumors going around everywhere that it's just really hard to know which one is legit and which one is not. Which is totally fine because now we can also create theories and conspiracy theories on how these floods happened. But there is a lot of um, evidence how these floods happened and... These floods obviously happened with rain, but there's a lot more that caused these floods. They say the mountains, landslides, the landslides is what made the flood so bad. As an actress, model, screenwriter, writer, producer, co-producer, and assistant director, I had two auditions the next day, the flood happened, and I was just planning everything out for my audition and everything, and um, that night, my mom woke me up and said, Kristen, Kristen, we have an emergency, and she grabbed a flashlight, we had to wear ring boots, and my whole yard, you know, there's this house that just went down the road and crashed into another house, it broke into pieces, and my mom said, don't run, Kristen, don't run, and I was saving my dog, um, we were running to my neighbor's house, which is two stories, and we stayed in the second story, because the first story got flooded in. And um, it was just a very stressful, stressful night. And I remember we had to stay up all night. And the next morning, we had no sleep whatsoever. Um, the next morning, my whole yard, it looked like a beach. Like, it was like waves of water. But it was like an ocean. Like, it was really, really, really deep. And I remember my whole garage was completely destroyed completely destroyed. The flood, um, the aftermath, it looked like the dust bowl, except it was just mud and mud everywhere and sand dunes of mud and mud, like literal mud dunes. What I love about being an Eastern Kentuckian is we have this Southern charm where we just help each other like a family and even if we don't even know each other or not even a part of our family we help each other like we are actual family and the whole world is family and we should always help each other 
even through bad times or not. And, you know, there's always someone in help in need. And that's what I love about being Eastern Kentuckian is we have, we look at everybody as family and love them as much as family. I also love being Eastern Kentucky as much as well because we come from a place where we have been put down and we grow from that and we become successful from that and we prove those who has put us down wrong. And all our lives of being Eastern Kentucky, we have always been made fun of for being hillbillies or being mountain people or just you know, it also being Kentucky. Kentucky is a very sacred place, especially Eastern Kentucky. And that sacred place and that sacred charm, that sacred Southern charm is very, very important to us.